Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Um, if you haven't commented, if you haven't shared, kindly take this opportunity to do so. Now, in today's episode, we are going to be taking you guys through um, HSC trainings. I have with me a lady who does this for a living. So, but before we dive in, I'm going to let her introduce herself. Karibu sana. Asante. Let's get a couple of high five parts. Ah, how? So, I am Faith Anyonje. Uh, I am an auditor by approved by the Ministry of Labor through DOSH to do health and safety audits. And our company, Essence Park Limited, is approved for EHS trainings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, even before we dive in, I feel like I should say that um, Faith, <coughs> is, uh, she, she's been in the industry for quite some time and uh, she's made it her business to create opportunities for women. So even her being here means that uh, people like us who are just starting out, she's giving us that opportunity to be able to grow in the industry. Not most women will offer you that opportunity. So Faith, thank you very much for creating that spaces for women. Oh, thank you. Yes. Now, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's just dive in. So Faith, tell us, uh, what are HSE trainings? We hear about them all the time, but what are they exactly? Uh, HSE trainings are trainings that have been um, subscribed to mm -hmm. uh, by different workplaces, mm -hmm. uh, either of course uh, legally because there are statutory trainings and others because of best practice and also depending on the industry that a workplace is trading in. Mm -hmm. So health and safety basically is to ensure that employees are safe while working uh, on any activity mm -hmm. and that they go back home safely yeah. so yeah we are looking into having more employees uh, having um, the satisfaction of working because mm -hmm. it's morally li uh, morally right that mm -hmm. you come to work mm -hmm. and go home safely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, remember we were having this conversation before where mm -hmm. we, we talked about, um, you know, there are some CEOs who don't really appreciate uh, trainings because for me, if you take your employees through trainings, then it means you're giving them an opportunity to be able to identify hazards, controls, and then also implement uh, mitigation measures mm -hmm. on site. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell us what the importance of trainings, these trainings are so that uh, the people who are disbursing the funds for trainings mm -hmm. really understand yeah. why they're important? Okay, so mm -hmm. training training is important, one, because it is a legal requirement. Uh, so you'll be avoiding enforcement, law enforcement actions if you actually do the trainings. Mm -hmm. Two, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's um, an ethical thing to do. Mm -hmm because uh, the employees need to know about the hazards mm -hmm. and it is it is the responsibility of an employer to mm -hmm. ensure that they have trained their employees mm -hmm. so it is it is ethical that they know the kind of hazards that they are in play uh, are in place mm -hmm. for them to avoid working in those uh, as in for them to create the measurements you've, mm -hmm. you you put the measurements uh, you've just said mm -hmm. to ensure that these um, hazards are not actually harming them yeah mm -hmm. so also morally it's it's good because you know you cannot work in a company that always have accidents mm -hmm. here uh, coming in out every time mm -hmm. you have accidents so even uh, the 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 word is not coming but the the moral image of the company mm -hmm. is tarnished if your company keeps getting accidents. Mm -hmm. Employees wouldn't also want to work for you. So it's also branding yourself mm -hmm. as an employer, mm -hmm. as an employer or a workplace mm -hmm. if you are working in a safer environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. now um, I think there, there, there are actually some clients who mm -hmm. actually track the number of trainings you've had in a year. Mm -hmm. So and then for now CEOs, you mentioned them. They're the ones who release the money for trainings. Mm -hmm. But are there trainings specifically mm -hmm. directed at uh, CEOs or top management? Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, trainings, you know, you know, health and safety for for health and safety to be implemented effectively, mm -hmm. then the top management must be involved. Mm -hmm. So I like the, the standardization I saw because it brings in and it's quite big in leadership and management. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so mm -hmm. if the top management is involved in the trainings, they now come to appreciate the, uh, the, 
um, health and safety. Mm. So even as a committee, you cannot be able to implement the smallest things if mm. the top management do not understand yeah. why. Mm. Because health and safety looks like it's expensive because it has, it needs money. So as, as the CEO, I don't want to just give out money. Mm. So I need to know why is it important for me to be mm. giving out mm. this money and what is it in, what is the need for me. Mm. Yeah, so it's very important that we have the top management involved in mm -hmm. health and safety. So yes, we have trainings that are specifically for the top management mm -hmm. and the trainings that we also have for health and safety committee. We also uh, advise workplaces to ensure that the top management representatives yeah. are in. Yeah. 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 Oh no. Yeah, that's true. Because mm -hmm. even the committee, I mean, the CEO is supposed to be part of it and the mm -hmm. chair, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So uh, to my next question, how how can an HEC person, you know, be able to convince management that the trainings that we've had throughout the year are actually paying off? Mm -hmm. How do you sit down with them and tell them that we had like this number of trainings, and this has been the impact that mm -hmm. it's had on the company and on the employees? Yeah. yeah. So I always advise a HEC personnel. Mm -hmm don't just do the training for the sake of doing a training mm. or because you want to show that you are being proactive. Mm. So you need to do an, a training need analysis mm -hmm. and according to your industry, you know and you've seen the trend of what is happening in your industry. Mm. For example, you are doing construction and the kind of accidents that you are getting mm. is because people are using the ladder and somehow most of accidents are coming through the ladder. Mm -hmm. So you can choose to do work at height uh, uh, training or specifically ladder safety mm -hmm. because that is what the problem is. Mm -hmm. So the CEO will relate well because those are the kind of accidents they are getting. Mm -hmm. So after the training, uh, allocate duties for uh, to the employees that have been trained mm -hmm. and then track see what have you done because if you don't also follow up mm -hmm. nothing is being done mm -hmm. on ground mm -hmm. then also according to the accidents that were happening because of the ladder mm -hmm. after the training are the the accidents reducing what what has changed mm -hmm. if it is risk assessment they were doing and they were not doing it right mm -hmm. so now now they understand how they can do the risk assessment mm -hmm. now they understand they they have to be two working on a ladder and not just one mm -hmm. they'll understanding they'll understand the landing of a, of, of a ladder and where it is supposed to be placed mm -hmm. they will understand the elevation of the ladder mm -hmm. and blah blah mm -hmm. so from then then you can be able to now come and say it's because of the training that we mm -hmm. have been we have been able to achieve this kind of safe working hours yeah. yeah so then from there then the CEO will see oh yeah this is, this is truly working yeah, yeah. yeah. But but then now that that's for the the CEO so that you get more money for for your training. Yeah. But uh, for the for the trainees themselves, how do I gauge? Mm. Uh, like, okay, these guys have understood this was the topic mm -hmm. and it's being implemented on ground. Yeah. How do I gauge that? Uh, that you can gauge with the proactiveness. Maybe uh, they were not reporting. Mm -hmm previously because they wouldn't uh, because they didn't know they needed to report yeah. or the safety culture then wasn't quite allowing them to report or they thought if they report they will be victimized yeah. so you get you get some of those employees that were trained uh, reporting or some incidences or coming and telling you but I've, I've seen so and so working on the ladder and they're not working correctly yeah, yeah. so what do you do to such employees you can incentivize or yeah incentivize give them something uh make them feel uh proud mm -hmm. that they've been seen they are doing something mm -hmm. good like you can do uh monthly like uh, employees safe uh, employees safe safest employee or um, whatever yeah, oh yeah. yeah of yeah. a month like actually i've seen recently people mm. are like a reward system one of mm -hmm. them is offering trainings to the ah. handyman so if you see a handyman as actually you know being more uh, he reports more issues or she reports more issues mm. than you know before yeah then you offer them training there's so many trainings first yeah. aid fire marshal you take them for those exactly because handymen have been sidelined for a long time mm. yeah unfortunately mm -hmm. yeah so those are some of the things so if if i feel good that I am part of the HSC committee mm. and that I am heard whenever I put out my idea or my concern, mm. then I get more involved. Yeah. Then if I am not involved and you're being awarded, I'm like, okay, I also want to be awarded. Yeah. I also want to be seen like I'm doing something. Yeah. yeah. 
So, so do, you, do you think that um, <coughs> if, we, if we, we have more trainings in a company, then mm -hmm. that would also encourage worker participation? Yeah, it will, because it's opening an avenue for discussion. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Because we had this conversation with a guest here um, last week, mm -hmm. and one of the tips that he gave for promoting worker participation is through trainings. Mm -hmm. And you've just mentioned that too. Yeah. So thank you for that. Now, to my next question, mm -hmm. um, I would ask, um, what are some of the trainings that are available for CEOs? For CEOs, yeah. So we have health and safety management uh -huh. training, mm -hmm. and those specific ones mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that is basically like what we offer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I feel like um, for them to be able to invest, they also need to understand what health and safety is. Mm -hmm. Because as a CEO, they yeah. either have a, a technical background mm -hmm. or more financial background, mm -hmm. but it's never purely health and safety. Yeah. So dealing with such a person, it requires them to have that background. So you're saying we only have that management, um, health and safety management training? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can have, you can have, it depends. Mm -hmm. So we even have supervisor manage, uh, supervisor health and safety training. Mm -hmm. That is just for the supervisors. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, saying supervisor in health and safety, that means also, it means also different yeah. staff. So yeah. you be, you be keen on, and different training in institutions mm -hmm. have different um, trainings specific for these kinds of groups. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't just say it's that uh, just that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Faith, you know very well that I'm passionate about um, SMEs, mm -hmm. and SMEs, when it comes to funding, they're a bit challenged in that area. Mm -hmm. So. What do you think they can do to, you know, ensure that they have more trainings while factoring in the financial challenges that they are facing? What are some of the tips that you could share with them? Okay. So uh, SMEs can come together mm -hmm. and train, especially SMEs that are in the same industry. Mm -hmm. They can come together and train the employees as a pool mm -hmm. and find um, uh, a service provider that would would really give them um, a better. Uh, maybe maybe a better a better what do I say like a better quotation or, or offer you know discount yeah. mm. because they are doing many trainings mm. and they are training more persons mm -hmm. so when they are coming together it will be like uh, like a training fee shared mm. yeah apart from that then uh, we have NITA reimbursement so yeah they can they can enroll in NITA mm -hmm do the training, get NITA approved institutions to do the training and then get reimbursement. Oh, okay. So that way you're not using your money mm -hmm. and just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but how do you think um, uh, clients can actually come in to assist SMEs? Um, I think, um, hmm. so sometimes uh, health and safety needs to be, to be, to be figured in at the design stage yes. before the project. Mm. So how they can assist us is ensuring that they factor in the expense for health and safety. Mm. So that when I am taking in the job as a construction contractor, mm. I know this percentage is allocated for health and That's safety. Yeah. So that, that will, will not eat into my quotation, mm. but that is just complementing my work on your side. Yeah. So even clients need to be open to pay for the health and safety mm. costs. They need to assist the contractors. Yeah, because health and safety is really expensive. It's really expensive, mm -hmm. but accidents are more expensive. True. Yeah. Yeah, but because um, I was also wondering, uh, also the SMEs, mm -hmm. I think even them, uh, health and safety becomes an afterthought. Yeah. If they were able to capture that in, yes. the, in the bidding process, mm -hmm. you know, clearly show the client that we mm -hmm. value health and safety. Exactly. And this is our quote. Yes. Purely for health and safety. Yeah. So then it becomes easier for the client. You know, they are able to budget for mm -hmm. that, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, thank you for that. Uh, my next question would be, for um, our supervisors on site, mm. are there specific trainings for them? For us in my industry, we normally have HERA mm -hmm. because HERA now would capture, you know, hazard identification and risk, and risk assessment. assessment yeah. But is there anything else that you could be, you know, offering them? Yeah, and I always say it's your personal development. Mm. So as 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 a supervisor, mm -hmm. health and safety, it is your own responsibility to develop yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
there are so many trainings mm. in health and safety. Mm. So according to your um, industry and according to your career projection mm. and what you want to do in future, mm. that should in uh, that should inform the kind of trainings that you want to mm. do. Mm. So there's someone who just wants to do construction safety. Mm. So they have to do scaffold training, mm. they have to do work at height training, they want to do confined space training, hot works training, and what exactly are those. Mm. So some are a little different, like mm. personally, let me give my, my example. So I am not into the technical bit of it. Mm. So I don't want to know much about maybe, I, I know I've done scaffold training, mm. but I wouldn't want to do major or major anything on mm. scaffold training. Mm. I prefer ladder safety, for example, mm. because I find ladders now this is me as a consultant yeah. because i find ladders are the easily accessible tools mm. for work at height and those are what we use mostly for smes mm -hmm. so for me as a consultant i would choose ladder mm -hmm. for example then you as a person who is always on site then you have to to weigh the minutes and what what is your passion as well mm -hmm. i don't want to just do this so i have a friend who chose to do project management mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. So she, because the, 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 the industry she was, she found that project managers in health and safety, they have to work together because of one, two, three. Yeah. And at some point she was given that docket of project management. And that is how she got herself into project okay. management. Yeah. yeah. And it is complementing her health and safety uh, professionalism. Yeah. I personally chose to do security. Mm because that then it will give me a leeway of or a leverage of doing hsse so according to what you want to do mm -hmm. or your own personal analysis mm -hmm. you are able to know what mm -hmm. do i want to do there are some that have chosen to do quality yeah, yeah. because the industry they are in is manufacturing mm -hmm. and quality is also more important mm -hmm. yeah or food related so mm -hmm. someone decides to do food safety mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's so many trainings, you just need to know according to your own projection, mm -hmm. where do you want to go, what is your interest, mm -hmm. yeah, what do you mm -hmm. want to do. And then currently we have circularity. Okay. Yeah, yes. and circularity, yes. sustainability, mm -hmm. you know, those are some of the courses then someone needs to also look into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and waste management, of course. Yeah, and then she's, she, she does that a lot, she's into waste management, so yeah. when she mentions circularity, waste mm -hmm. management, yeah. Um, so Faith, uh, Throughout this conversation, I mean, we've had, we've mostly focused on, on the safety aspect. Mm -hmm. We've not touched on the E in HSE. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that um, employees also need a bit of training on waste management? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, this, the, the environment part, unfortunately, is usually forgotten. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's very important. And there are so many different uh, trainings as mm -hmm. well in environment. Mm -hmm. And there's EIA, there's EA, 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 Environment Audit and Environment Impact Assessment. Mm -hmm. There's uh, um, Waste Management Trainings, Energy Management Training, Carbon Footage Training, you know, so many different training, even General uh, Solid Waste Management mm -hmm. Trainings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's currently now Circularity as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, so, so many trainings up around environment, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so mostly for basic waste management, mm. say, because, you know, our activities do impact the environment negatively if you're not careful mm. in how we manage our waste. Yeah. So which training specifically, especially basic waste management, would mm. you recommend for that technician on site? So Solid waste they, management, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because those are the usual, they, they are the most, uh, most waste that we, we find hard to 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 manage mm. and they, they are the most easily available wastes mm. yeah mm. and solid money solid wastes they are different you know can be plastics mm. can be paper mm. can be cables for your case mm. can be any construction uh, yes. waste mm. all the debris you know mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and also i know this is going outside um, this uh to today's topic but let me especially hazardous waste mm -hmm. because right now as we mentioned earlier mm -hmm. uh, for us we are dealing with um splicing waste and this is hazardous to the environment mm -hmm. and also to the employees themselves right mm -hmm. um and uh, what i've noticed is uh, most employers do not know how to handle hazardous waste when it comes from site the, the thing they do is that it's disposed of in a 
a joint or just one mm. container, okay. then the waste handler comes and picks it up from there. Mm. There's no tracking of where it ends up. So now that we're talking about the E and HSC, what, yeah. what would be your advice for that? So first of all, mm. the splicing waste yeah. is will be categorized not as hazardous waste mm. but as e waste. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so um okay, so it's we, we still have a long way to go, mm. but uh thanks to the Sustainable Waste Management Act that mm. was enacted last year, twenty twenty two, that has put in place these measures or actions mm that they we hope will be implemented in different workplaces mm -hmm. because uh, it, it it puts on the workplaces or it is your personal responsibility to be segregating your wastes mm -hmm. according to the different types of wastes. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing the training, the solid waste management training, we train uh, the people to know the different types of wastes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and how you categorically do segregate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we also provide the different dustbins, yeah, and label them differently to allow or help the people to segregate. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people being not having been uh, trained in it, mm -hmm. you'll find the, the dustbin that is clearly written PET bottles have metals, for example, have mm -hmm. peppers, mm -hmm. because we, we just throw, we mm -hmm. just throw our waste. So, yeah. That's the unfortunate bit, but we are trying to do the trainings. Mm -hmm. We, as Essence Park, we have also started doing the solid waste mm -hmm. management training and working together with NEMA. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are coming up with something okay. that will work for the society. Okay. Yeah. But, but also, because um, I know homeowners also generate a lot of mm -hmm. waste mm -hmm. from organic to solid waste. Yeah. But how, how do you do you bring them on board at any point? Okay, so for, for this world. World Environment Day mm -hmm. and this June, mm -hmm. Essence Park decided to do a waste drive. Yeah. And we did this in the nearest community with, uh, within which we have our facility, mm -hmm. our material recovery center. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we were talking to the community and sensitizing them about waste management mm -hmm. and putting value to the waste. So, and we had a session where we were teaching them after they brought their waste because they just bring it the way it is. Mm -hmm. So we were teaching them how to segregate because we were weighing the waste different types of waste differently. Mm -hmm. And also paying them differently according to the different type of waste. Okay. So that way when they get to the awareness session desk, mm -hmm. then we tell them. This is this is different type of plastics, and we have different categories of plastics mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we, we 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 create awareness to them. So apparently we have realized uh, that individuals pollute more because when you walk outside here, oh, yes. too many bottles, mm -hmm. too many paper. Someone who's eating a sweet just throws the sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, the water bottles they have. Uh, leads the leads is a the lead of a of a PET bottle mm. uh, is totally different from the bottle itself. Two different plastics, yeah. so they will they will just throw differently mm. until uh, someone comes and picks it. Those people, uh, the pickers, waste mm. pickers, mm. and unfortunately they are called chokora. But they are not. It's only that they are they are making something out of the Absolutely, waste. Yeah. yeah. So if the community knows that they can. Car, they can buy maybe skumawiki mm. through those things they are finding as waste mm. then they'll value them more mm. and try to keep them yeah yeah okay um and do, do you think that uh waste management um some of the practices we have in place would be more effective if mm. we started off by training kids in schools when it comes to waste management yeah sure and i'm glad that currently we do have a uh, environment Environment, uh, environmental science is being taught in the CBC curriculum. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. And you know, unfortunately, when we were growing up, and that is the problem we have, when we were growing up, we you'd be given an, a punishment to go and pick waste, you know. So already, it, you just grow up knowing waste is mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. And then how it is even placed, the waste is placed in a place that is mainly, you know, uh, no one wants to do that kind of job. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a bit kind of uh, a stigma, and we are also bringing in the behavioral change 
um, aspect to waste mm. as well because even those people who are very learned still have this bad mentality about waste yeah yeah, okay. yeah. and then look at that's why uh, we also like the sustainable waste management act mm. because it's giving you a thought when you're producing something how do you plan to dispose it mm. and not just coming up with something that you plan to dispose but how else can it be used mm. yeah okay. just that's that's now how we are creating okay. the circular economy yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So guys, I mean, I hope you've learned something here, especially on waste management and generally on the topic for today, which was on HSE trainings. Okay. Yeah. So, Faith, mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, maybe you have something to say to the audience as a parting shot. Ah, thank you so much for having me, Vivian. It's a pleasure. And yeah, so I would I would say that um, generally we embrace. Uh, HSC trainings mm -hmm. because they are the easiest way to to give employees um, morality uh, not really morality as in morale. the morale exactly yes. so it gives the employees morale mm -hmm. if you like what you're doing if you like the kind of workplaces then you get the morale to work keep mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. so apart from that on waste management keep keeping the waste mm -hmm. We are only we, we want to, to keep uh, to put value on your waste. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 So uh well thank you very much for joining us and guys I hope you've learned as much as I have. So thank you. Bye.